Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today for our fancy fish project. We've had a lot of white and gray and gloominess over the last winter months, so I've decided let's bring spring into it. We can't make flowers yet, they're not coming out quite enough, but they're getting here. So in the meantime, I decided we would make some very colorful fish, almost like tropical fish, and bring in some of the really bright colors that we're gonna have in the summer and springtime. So what we're gonna do is make a fish and then we're gonna put it in an environment. The environment is where the fish lives. This fish is living in the ocean maybe, here's some sand on the bottom, Here, here's the fish, he's kind of mostly cut paper and he's got a little bit of coral in the bottom. This fish is also in the water and you see he's got a lot of seaweed hanging there too and he's a little bit fancier. I got a little bit more carried away with him and that's what was fun. And I put pom-poms and crushed paper and all sorts of other things. And that's kind of what we're going to do today. We're going to start with a basic fish and then we're going to continue and see how well it goes. The first thing you need to do is to draw a picture of your fish. And the bigger you make the fish, the more room you're gonna to have to put cool things in it. If these were too skinny or too thin, you wouldn't have as much space and some of your objects might be rather large and you wouldn't have room for them. So if you take a piece of paper that's about the size of a construction paper, nine by 11, or a computer page. If it fits on a computer page, it's going to work really well. And what you're gonna do is take your marker and start outlining it until you have the entire fish outlined. That's so you can have an idea of where you're gonna put your, your items. The, the pencil tends to get a little bit light and hard to see. So before we start, I'm gonna show you some of the things that I've collected so that I have them all in front of me. Of course, I have our glue and scissors and that's fine too. I have paper strips because as you can see, my fish have a lot of little curly paper things on it. I have stickers. I have pom-poms, I have confetti, I have puzzle pieces, and they're a little tiny, so it's a little tricky to glue them down, but the fish isn't all that great. I took regular square tissue paper, which we've used before, and I made them into little crunchy balls. Not the tufts that we've done, but crunchy balls. And then I have my little tin with lots of cut paper for the mosaics, which is what this is called, where you put squares or rectangles side by side and leave a little bit of space. And I have pom-poms and I have silver and gold paper, and quite the collection of things. I even have an old holiday bow because that might not look too bad on the back end of as a tail or something too. So I have that. And then I have these little cups that are for little muffins and things. When you flatten them down, they tend to look like scales on a fish. So I thought I'd put that there. And then our little Q-tips will move aside. I have lots of things to choose from. And that's where the fun begins. What I did on my new practice one is I put the face in as a solid color. I use the cut paper. We want to be able to see where the eye is and have something that's not too busy because then it's all going to blur together and we won't see which, which is which. So on this one, on my new practice one, I will show you how we're going to do that. Since that fish face is yellow, I'm going to take some green. I'll take some orange. That would be kind of nice. That's bright. And I'm just going to take my glue stick, and I'm just going to spread it over that entire front part that we marked out. When we're all done with the fish, your adult helper person is going to cut this for you because it's going to be a little tricky trying to cut it along the lines and be able to get the fish shape in there. If it's not perfect, who's going to know? But at least, you know, we will fill it in. So I'm just pressing these down, getting them in there to fill as much space. You can always go back later, cut some smaller ones or whatever, but you want to just keep it going and cover it as much, at least for the fish. Face. For the other parts, if you needed to, you could always leave some open spaces and that would be fine. But for the face, we want to be able to know that it's a solid part and stuff. That's the only part of the fish that we really have to worry about being able to see clearly. And, and again, if you don't like it, you can always go and put something else on top of it. That's the fun part about a paper project. Nothing is definite. So now I have his face done too. 
and we can go on with the other thing. I think I'm going to make one more row of the mosaic, and it's just going to be like to outline it. So I'm going to do that, and I'm just going to put a narrow rim down, and then I'm going to start with some of this paper. This is some wrapping paper that has turquoise and gold and black, and that looks very cool. And it actually says happy birthday, but when you cut it up, you don't really see that. But the, the colors of it are a little darker than what we usually are doing, but it still, it looks nice. And it gives us a good division in that. So now we've got a second part. I think we could even do some more of this if we want. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put another row, and I will tell you why I'm doing that. Because I want a bigger area and we're going to overlap some of the other torn paper on top. So I think since there's some blue in there, I'm going to use some of that blue then. And then just lay them all side by side. When I used the confetti that I had that was actually shaped like fish, it stayed on really well. And then when I woke up the next morning and picked up the project, the pieces were falling off. So apparently the glue stick did not work really well with the um, metal of the confetti part. So here I'm, I'm getting better at that. Remember, we're going to have a fin right here. I did collect some very interesting wrapping paper, and I really liked it. So this is like an animal print. These are chameleons, I think. But look at the colors on that. That is just really, really out there. And stuff. So what I'm going to do with this is rather than cutting it out since we did the other cutting, I'm going to tear some of this stuff because what happens is it gives you a, a rough edge and little people, and you can all just tear and cut things. So I'm going to just do this. Here's an interesting shape. I can put the glue stick on the fish or I could put this on, on the paper itself. And maybe I'm just going to put another one over here. I'm not being too careful in the middle because remember we said we're going to have a little fin in there. So he's he's starting to come again. This is another favorite wrapping paper I like because it's got little shoes that are saying funny things. But it's very colorful. So I'll just take some of that and put that down here now too. You notice this is not a slow project. You can get this done pretty quickly. And if you wanted to, you could probably make even some more some more fish. You can make a, a school of fish, which is like a family. You can do that and stuff too. So I did that, and we've got that paper down. And I'm not concerned about colors. I found now this shiny paper, and I thought, that looks really good. So I'm just going to cut some of that, put this down, and see how it looks. And as we're going, it's looking okay. It's hard to tell right now because the magenta is a very deep color and we're having a little bit of problem seeing this. So I'll put a little bit more of this, but I'm not going to put it across. I'm just going to put it in the blob next to it. So here we have something different over here. And that's good enough for that. I haven't used my animal print yet, and I thought that would be kind of good too. So let's take some of this. A fish with a, a leper skin on it. I'm going to put this rather delicately on here. Delicately means you're being very careful with it because it is tissue paper and it may just tear. So I'm just going to go ahead and put glue stick on the rest of our, our fish. The little metallic paper is not sticking really well, so you may have to go back and do it. Now he's getting kind of busy. And now we need to decide, like, what are we going to do over here and kind of calm them down a little bit. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take puzzle pieces. On my other sample one that I was doing, I did it over here. And as I said, we're going to use glue stick, and then we're going to throw some Elmer's glue on top of here just because we want to make sure that those glue, those puzzle pieces are going to stick to where we're putting them. 
They can certainly overlap the parts that you have here. I'm going to rub that in there because then it glue dries up and comes right off your fingers. So I'm just going to randomly put puzzle pieces. I can leave space. It doesn't make any difference. This would be a great time to put glitter on. And I did not bring glitter. But the glitter would go on any of the glue that is showing between these puzzle pieces. And then it would add another dimension of what we call texture. Texture is how something feels. And this is certainly very textured. And I'm going to put some glue stick on this piece because I want it right here. Okay, so now we're getting kind of interesting there too. I may even want to come back and put a second layer of puzzle pieces on there, but not quite yet. Now I'm coming to, oh, I should put some here. You want to really fill this out because you don't want it to look like the tail's falling off. So we'll get a few more puzzle pieces. And let's see, even little pom-poms. Oh, we'll put some little row of pom-poms. Let's do that because it's a very tiny space here. So we'll just go through and put some little pom-poms down here. And you can see there's not a lot of thinking that you really have to worry about what's the right way or the wrong way. It's almost like pick up something and put it somewhere. It's just a very, what we call, spontaneous project. So now he has some pom-poms. And I want to get a couple more little pink ones because we have some more room here. And I'm wondering what we should do for his tail. We have tails and two fins. So we're coming there. We may come back and put some more things on top of that. And maybe we might do that right now, actually. For his eye, you might want to do some paper. And I think we will take some of this black paper. And that'll be the background for our eyeball. It'll show up against the orange. So here's where his eyeball is going to go. And what color eye should we give him? We could give him... Purple won't show up too well, but that's okay. Or we could use a bright neon green. So let's just put this down. And there it is. So he has his eyeball. He's got a little bit of everything going on in his body right now. And now we need to think of some more things that we can do with his tail. Remember I told you we could even use this Christmas bow or holiday bow for his tail. But you probably would want to put something underneath there. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to take some more paper. Oh, we didn't use our tissue paper crushes yet. Oh, we have to use that. That's just so cool. So I have some more wrapping paper. And I'm going to use this without tearing them. I'll use the bigger squares. It's very, very colorful, so we're going to overlap it, and it's going to have lots of different colors to it. And those all the colors of the fish. And now I have something that we're going to do. We're going to do something to this. We're not just going to leave it like that. But that doesn't actually look bad. But what we're going to do is I have Q-tips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Elmer's glue bottle and I'm going to draw a line of glue. Oops. This really dries up on here fast. I'm going to draw a line of glue with my Elmer's glue and I'm going to lay one of my Q-tips in that. Because it's creating like little lines, these fins have little lines and these have lines back here. But I'm going to do that with my Q-tip, and it's kind of, they're not bones, but they almost look like bones, but they're not supposed to be bones. And we'll just do that and lay them in. This will have to sit and dry for a little bit. If I go to pick this up now, the weight of the Q-tip is going to fall off, and the glue will just dry in the lump. The good thing about Elmer's glue is it dries clear, and you don't know where it was when you started. 
I'll kind of gently hold that up that you sort of can see how it's coming, but we'll let that dry. So while that's drying, this would be a good time to go and do some of our tissue papers on the fins. And since they are both the same thing, they're both the fins, I think I'm going to use the tissue paper tops for both of those. I'm not trying to make a pattern or anything. I just took some bright colors, put glue stick on one of those fins, and you can go off the outside of your drawing and just put them randomly. Random means you don't plan where you're putting them. You just mix them all up by color. You want to make sure that it's touching the glue. If it's not touching the glued surface, it won't stick. And that when you go to pick it up, you're going to have these little guys popping off all over. So I'm just kind of mixing up some of the colors and putting down some more glue stick. You just kind of see what's happening here. And I need one little person, one little tiny one over in the corner here. And that's fine. So that's even adding another texture. We have smooth and bumpy and pointy and we have textures all over the place. And now I'm going to do the other fin. I don't have to match the colors. It's just because nothing's really matchy-matchy on this fish. Scientifically, I don't know if that's the case. I think maybe they are symmetrical with their designs. I don't know. Something I can look up online. And we're getting there. Greens and purples and blues are warm color, are cool colors rather. And reds and yellows and orange are warm colors. So we have kind of a mixture with our fish here of both kinds. Let's get a yellow here because it's bright and cheerful and stuff. I will put this away. So now, oh my goodness gracious, he's really getting here. He's getting kind of wild and crazy. Oops, this is moving. What we need to do now before we get too far along and just forget about it completely, remember I said we need to make a side fin so he can swim or she or it, whatever. I have some really nice lime green paper and basically what we're going to do is just cut a triangle. And however, whatever kind of big size of triangle you want, it's totally up to you. You don't want to hide your project. So this looks interesting. I'll put it on my fish. And it's pretty big and heavy there. So it's a little bit bigger than I need. And I'm going to just snip this a little bit. Because part of this we're going to fold and glue it that way. So I'm going to fold this over. He is hiding my little favorite shoe guy there, which I didn't want to happen, but that happens sometimes. So I'm going to look and see where this would go. I'm going to put glue stick on this edge now. I'm going to turn him so I can look at him right side up. Because now we need to decide what to do with, with this. He's really coming along pretty far. This is very solid and very big, so we're going to decorate that somehow, but we're not going to get too carried away with it. While this is all drying, you can think, oh, we could do this. How about this? We have stickers. We could put stickers on, on his little fin. So let's put these round orange stickers and see how far we go. Maybe we're only going to be able to get three of them on there. It's looking kind of cool. We could leave it like that, or let's do two pink. Now it's almost looking like a puppy dog's paw, so we have to be careful. So We're picking up some of the same colors that are in other places of your, of your fish. The glue is starting to dry on our little Q-tips here. Our little fish is coming, looking pretty good. I wish he had a name. We should probably think of a name for him, but I don't know what it would be. So I'm asking you, you think we should go on and add some more 
Yes? Okay, we'll add some more. Let's put another orange one and one more orange one. It's not a perfect pattern necessarily. I don't know if there is such a thing. Maybe we'll just change it around a little bit. I'm amazed that the stickers are coming up. I didn't think they would. So we'll just get a little bit random here. And then one more over here. So this is looking good too. We could, if we wanted to, draw something on there or outline it, but he's looking rather stunning. We need something on his eye here because we don't see the eye bulb actually. And normally I would take a, a marker and color it on, but since this is fuzzy, it's not going to work on that. I think maybe we could find some black paper and just make a little circle. Or if you have a hole puncher, you could do that and see if this is going to work for a little character here. You can always name your fish too. People who have fish in fish bowls always seem to have little names for them, so you could put a, you could name your fish. Well, he has an eyeball, but I don't, I'm not liking it, so we're going to just make it a little smaller. We're going to make sure it stays all black. There. Then it looks more like an eyeball. All right. He's coming. He's coming along pretty good on things. The only thing I haven't used is I haven't curled any paper yet and put that on there. And I'm just looking around with all my goodies to see if there's anything else that I could do. I do have some of these fish confetti. And I could take a glue stick and try that and see if they will stick a little bit overnight. And maybe I'll put pink ones on the orange dots and just check it out and see if that works. Maybe it'll be, we'll be lucky and maybe it'll be, it'll be fine. All right, so right now I'm checking to see all the things that we cut out and we use. Remember I said we could put the bow here for his tail, but I think that's too much. You could if you wanted to do it. So we have the cut paper, we have stickers, we have pom-poms, we have a lot of everything going. So I think the last thing that we need to do is to cut out our fish. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. It's a little tricky because some parts are still wet. So because I can see where that black line is, I'm just going to cut in and out. And again, who's going to know? If you miss a little something. It's not the end of the world with this. Mm -hmm. I think cutting the fins are the hardest part if you're using the tissue paper because it's kind of hard to see around them. And now this is a little tricky also because we have the q-tips there. So you just kind of cut around that and come back again. He's almost ready to go. We have to decide what our environment will be. If you have seashells, some of you have gone to the beach in the past and you collect seashells like I do, you could always use Elmer's glue or some other kind of heavy duty craft glue. And after we put our fish in the environment, here he comes, you could decide where you want to to put him and then put some seashells. Let's take this one off of here and see what we could do. We could take our marker and we could just draw some lines through the middle of his fin on this side because they then it looks almost like motion. So let's clip him onto our environment. I'm clipping him right by the little pom-poms that are his air bubbles. And here we go with our newest fancy fish. And we'll put him in our little aquarium. So, Well, I hope you had a fun time learning how to make some fancy fish. And I hope you make a whole bunch of them. I'm looking at how many more materials I have here. And I could probably make 10 more. 
So maybe on a gloomy day, I'll decide to sit and make some more and have some fun. So enjoy the crab. Have a nice little springtime vacation here. And then see you in a couple months at our next library art. Bye now.